Cassie Deputy with DeputyTribe.com and today we are going to be reviewing elementary math games by the Critical Thinking Company. Welcome back to DeputyTribe.com. Today we're going to be reviewing elementary math games by the Critical Thinking Company. Now, this company was established in, uh, was founded by John Baker in 1958. And the whole purpose of this company and all the curriculum that they put out is to get students to exercise and develop their critical thinker, thinking skills for the grades that they're in so that they can get higher test scores and they can just succeed better in life. Um, they don't teach through drill and memorization, but they like to teach in a way that really empowers the mind and causes the student to grasp concepts in a way that is not traditionally taught. Um, and that is exactly what this curriculum did. Now this is uh, for grades three through five, and it has, let's see how many games it has in it. It has 20 different games in it. Um, so this is really fun. And uh, let's see, we played our favorite games. We have five of our favorite games in this book. Um, Stand Up and Be Counted was one of ours. Fill the Grid, I Know My Place, Top 10 with a Twist, and Can You Make? So all these games focus on different things that you would be learning in the third to fifth grade. A lot of place value things. Um, there's a greater than, less than game. As you can see, everything's black and white, and pretty much all the equipment that you need to play this game is right in the book. So you can just make copies of things, which I learned, do not rip them out of the book, make copies. Um, some fun stomp your hands, clap your feet, um, you know, counting, skip counting, recognizing what numbers are in what multiplication families. Um, can you make was a really fun one. Math in a circle, a lot of group games. Some of these you can play with a lot of people. Some of these you can play with just a few people. But as you can see, there's so many things. There's a bingo, there's like a, uh, you know, bingo, but it's not your traditional bingo. Um, you know, it's got its own possible key answer down here. There was also a um, top 10 with a twist, which was similar to war, but it was different and it really taught you how to use your multiplication facts. And a lot of these you can um, alter for addition also, so you can practice your addition and your subtraction facts. But basically how these are laid out is they tell you what materials you need. Um, they teach you what you're going to be learning in your mathematic, um, you know, what mathematical topics you're going to be going over in this so They game. give you a brief overview of what this game is going to be about and then um, what it includes and things like that. And then how to play the game, the directions followed by whatever paperwork you need to copy to play. So there's all that. Um, so there's 20 games. Uh, this is literally endless. We did not get through all the games, obviously. A lot of this stuff was stuff that my just graduated third graders could do. I would say probably about half of it they could do. Um, a little bit of it was over their head, such as the um, you know, decimal points, because we haven't quite learned that yet. A lot of things with fractions that they, um, I don't think we're quite, quite ready for. Um, but yeah, so you can see everything you pretty much need is in here, outside of your everyday material. So this was super, super fun. We had a lot of laughs, a lot of good times together um, playing these games. So our plan is to definitely keep this and keep working through this. It was nice break. Um, to really understand where my kids were at in their thinking skills. And um, I really want to keep playing these games over the next two years of our homeschool because it really solidified a lot of concepts. I would say my personal favorite game was Can You Make? So let's go to page 20 here and I'll just walk you through one game quick and then I will have you hear from my kids on what their favorite games were. So this was my favorite. As you can see, these are the materials you need. Just a pencil and paper, a timer, cards, and a whiteboard, which most people have in their homes. You're going to learn the fluency using the four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. You're going to generate and analyze patterns. 
perform operations with multi-digit whole numbers, interpret numerical expressions. So it sounds complicated, it's not so complicated. Overview, students use number sense, operational skills, and strategies to compute a target number from five randomly chosen numbers. Operational fluency and precision is an asset in this activity. I was like, yeah, there's no way my kids are gonna understand this. So basically, the gist of this game is you hand out six index cards and they write random numbers from one to 50 on these six index cards. So then what they do is I write a random number up on the board um, or I have the students go around and they could pick a random number between one and 50. I'm sorry, the numbers on their cards were between one and 25, but the number we wrote on the board was between one and 50 and it could be any random number. And what they did was they would use their numbers, so they had five, the sixth card was for scoring. They would use their five numbers to in some way create the number that was on the board. And I believe they had to, nope, they didn't have to follow any order of operation. So they could multiply, they could divide, they could add, they could subtract, but supposedly this is supposed to work every single time, um, which blew my mind. So as we're working through this game and we're stuck, we would wrestle and wrestle. Okay, well, what if we did? So for instance, here's the example that they give down here. So let's say your numbers are 5, 10, 11, 13, and 7, okay? And the number on the board is 25. So you have to use 5, 10, 11, 13, and 7 to get to 25. So what you could do is 13 plus 7 plus 10 minus 5 to get to 25, you know? Or you could multiply. You know, there's different, different orders. There's different ways you can do it. So this was really fun because I had my own sets of cards and I'm struggling and I'm struggling and it's funny to see like which kids just got it and they just were like, oh, if, if I need to get to this number and I know this times this is close, then maybe I can, you know, play around and it was, it was a lot of fun. So I would definitely say for sure that this book increased our critical thinking skills. This lived up to exactly what it says it's going to do. It is not just a... Uh, useless thing that you can use once you can use this over and over again and even in the few weeks that we committed to doing these games um, we didn't even touch half of these games um, so i'm really excited to keep digging through this and as my kids learn more concepts i'm excited to challenge their thinking skills and not just pen and paper math but really understand that these skills um, can be fun so i picture us doing a lot more game nights um, especially over the summer when you kind of have those you know, summer rainy days or whatever, to pull this out and play some games to kind of sharpen their critical thinking skills. So this was a huge uh, blessing and honor to review, and I would definitely recommend this book um, to anyone who has elementary grade students and you're looking for a way to sharpen their critical thinking skills and kind of um, give them the tools that they need to think outside the box in mathematics. I know a lot of these games I kind of struggled with because I my critical thinking skills all aren't all that great either um, so this was a lot of fun I definitely recommend this book so go ahead and check out the links below uh, you can check out their company you can check out this book specifically you can also read other reviews from my crewmates by clicking on the link to the banner below or on my blog page I'll have the banner right below this video and um, don't forget to subscribe and hit like and forward this video and this blog post to other people that you know and pass the word because this is a fabulous company and they really do live up to what they say that they um, do. So thanks for tuning in. God bless. My favorite game was Can You Make and because I really like trying to figure out what and what makes this because mostly because I was winning the whole thing. <laughs> so Can You Make was the game where they got some index cards and they wrote random numbers between zero or was it one and um, yeah. 50. So random numbers, 11, 4, 8, 4, 27, 4, whatever. And then I wrote a random number on the board. You took all your numbers and in some way, whether you were timesing, dividing, adding, or subtracting, with your numbers you had to create the number that was on the board and it worked every time, which blew our mind. No matter what numbers you picked, it worked every time and she was like a pro.
I mean, she would go around the table and help all of us figure out how to make that number work. So that was her favorite game. So what was your favorite game? I Know My Place. And in I Know My Place, this uh, we all wrote uh, one, two, three, four, five blanks on a piece of paper. And then we picked cards from a deck. And when a card would come up, you'd have to decide where you wanted to put it. Um, and we tried to see who could build the biggest number. So once you put a number in a space, it had to stay in that space. So you were kind of committed. So uh, it was really, really fun. We played this for hours. This was really fun. Why did you like this game? Because we used the cards. We did use Uno cards. Why did you like this game? Because she won a lot, so she liked it. She had a good nick for what numbers were coming next. And so her favorite game was called Stand Up and Be Counted. Um, so I learned something. Make copies of the stuff that's in the book because you're not actually supposed to cut them out because they have directions on the other side. So I learned that the hard way. Um, I don't think it's said in there to make copies of the pages, so that may be something you want to add to the instructions. But basically, um, the students got some random numbers. They got to write out random numbers. And as we went through, there's different levels. We went through level A. As they went through this, they had to pick one of the numbers they picked that would align with this category. And then they would try to, you know, get as many as they could first. So we played a few different variations. But why did you like this game? It was really fun. Also, I really like it. Yeah. <laughs> So like in five times table, but not in the four times table. So they had to kind of think through their numbers. Did any of these go in the five? No, 30 is not in the four times table. But not, oh yeah, that's right. And then greater than 60, less than 75, a multiple of nine, a factor of 24, an even number. I always got the even number. A 10, the tens digit is less than eight. So you see we're learning place value, we're learning all these different Wait, and what it does was that fun. Mean? Yeah. <laughs> the tens digit. So you have the units and the tens. So the tens digit is less than eight. So like seventy four or sixty two. Oh, so it's less than eight. It's less than eighty. Yeah. So that was her favorite game.